Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. As you can see, I've got my paintbrushes and I've also got my paints. These are the paints that I like to use if you're curious, they're acrylics. And then I've also got this wooden canvas board that I'm going to be painting on. So before I begin, like and subscribe and let's do it. Not to flash you with bones, but this is the reference that I'm going to be using. A lot of artists like to take their own reference pictures, but you can see why that's not going to be possible for this one. So then I grabbed my pencil and got ready to start sketching. Usually I don't like to use a pencil for my sketches on a canvas because the paint mixes with the graphite and gets all gray and gross and muddy, but I thought that I was just going to do the skeleton kind of a gray and white kind of color anyway, so I was like, eh, it'll just add to the effect and actually actually make the painting easier, but then last minute after I sketched this out with the power of some movie magic, it looks like the sketch took five seconds, but it took 20 minutes. But after I sketched it out, I decided I wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone and travel a little bit outside of the box and make the skeleton super colorful instead of just gray. So I started in with some colors. At this point, I was just excited to start painting. Drawing skeletons is really hard. I had to count the ribs about 20 times to make sure that I had the same amount on both sides and that it was the right number on each side. So that was really challenging to make sure that the skeleton looked somewhat anatomically correct. Definitely not 100%, but I wanted it to be close enough. So then after that point, I was just so excited to start painting. I'm a big believer that a strong foundation is really key. So I wanted to make sure the sketch was really Good, but I also just really wanted to start painting. So I was really glad to start adding in some colors. I knew that this was just going to be a base layer of colors and they were definitely getting muddy from that graphite, which I did know was going to happen, but it's okay because I'm going to do about five more layers on top of this because that's just my process anyway. So I'm not too worried about it right now. What I am trying to do is not create more mud though with the colors that I have chosen to use. You've probably heard of this thing called a color wheel before, and it was super important that I used the color wheel to make sure that none of my colors that were touching were going to blend together and make something super ugly. So I made sure to put yellow next to pink, then pink next to purple, and then purple next to blue. That way I made sure not to create any unwanted colors, because if I put blue next to yellow, obviously I would get green. If I put yellow next to purple, I'd get a grayish brown. If I put blue, next to orange, I would have got a brown. You get the point. I had to make sure that none of my colors mixed in a way that I did not want them to. So I was very strategic about where I placed my colors to create shadows, but also to create depth and also to make sure that they did not make an ugly, mucky color. I love art that looks whimsical and colorful and bright and vibrant and fun, and I've always wanted to do that with my art, and this is the first time that I've ever really tried to do that and use a whole bunch of different colors to try and create an image that still makes sense. It's actually really hard to just pick a whole bunch of random colors and make them still look right on a canvas because your mind really interprets colors as lighting and shading and all of these different things that come into play at the same time, so if you're not ready for it, it can really create a mess instead of a beautiful colorful rainbow of colors. So now it's time to start going in with some cleanup brushes and some finer details. So I took this super tiny baby brush and this is my happy place. When I get past the sketch and past layer one, I'm like, all right, all systems go. I know what I'm doing now and I'm ready to add in those details. So I went ahead in with my finer brushes and started adding in more vibrant colors and tried to be a little bit neater with my lines. And then I also so went in and added the back ribs, you know, the ribs, how they like wrap around the front and the back. I had to do the back ones, but I had to do them through the front ones, which was really confusing and complicated. So I tried to make sure I was following my lines and patterns. And then you also have these like floating ribs on the bottom, which honestly really scared me. My husband said that it made him think that it was spider-like and I really don't like spiders. So I did not like that. And then it was time to work on the hips a little bit more. I wanted to really make sure that they were smoothed out. My style can be a little bit patchy sometimes and I kind of add in some textures and brush strokes, but at the same time, I really like a smooth brush blended moment. So I tried to incorporate both into this drawing and this painting to keep it a little bit more visually interesting. 
At this point, I am loving how it's turning out, but I definitely need the colors to be more saturated and brighter. So I'm going to continue going in and brightening up all of the areas that I need to and adding in more detail to really make that color pop and just be super fun. I'm trying to not take it too seriously and I'm not really worried about messing it up because I'm trying something new and that is the point of this entire thing was to try something fun and different and add in a whole bunch of color and kind of play around a little bit more and try to get those sat saturated colors that go together and just look super magical and fun like I talked about before. So I'm adding in my highlights, trying to make things look super sparkly and glittery. My husband at one point also compared this painting to looking like a glass skeleton, which I thought was really cool and that it's kind of inspired some of the decisions that I made in the future for this. But now it's time to bring in this black paint and I'm going to go around this entire skeleton with black paint, which which is very scary for me and satisfying hopefully to watch for you but I was really nervous about this part because I was scared that I was going to you know paint over all of my hard work that I've already spent three hours on um yeah kind of panicking a little bit but it turned out okay I was doing pretty good and I also kind of talked myself down I was like listen you did it once if you really needed to I'm sure you could do it again so thankfully I didn't have to test that theory and I did a really good job making sure that I did careful lines around the parts that I had already painted. I'm not gonna lie, it was really scary though. But then after I had painted around all of the parts, I just kept on filling everything in. I kind of decided to use this paint that has a gloss to it. So the painting of the skeleton is matte, but then the part that's black is kind of glossy. And I felt like that would be cool because it would make it kind of different and stand out a little bit more. And then I also decided to make kind of little cross hatches in the background to add a little bit of a texture in there with the glossy paint. And I felt like that also made a big difference and I chose the black background because I really wanted all of these colors to just pop off of the skeleton and you can already tell the difference that it made. The skeleton is just glowing now that the background is black. I also added in some blue around the edges of this canvas because I felt like adding in the blue would just draw your eye a little bit more to the skeleton and add in some similar colors that made the blue in the actual rib cage pop out a little more as well. That was my plan there for that and then I also had to go inside of the skeleton rib cage and fix all of the black parts in between the ribs which was even more scary than going around the outside but after that it was time to add in a whole bunch of more colors and details and try and touch up all of the parts that needed some fixing and I just wanted to make sure that all of the lines were super crisp and clean and really red professional you know what I mean after I had finished professionalizing all of the lines of the rib cage, then it was time to fix up the background. I decided that I could not leave it as is, so I added in some light blue to try and add a little bit more of a light source, which I think would be coming from the top right. I should know that. I do know that. It's coming from the top right. So then I added in some little lights as well, kind of my little sparkles, you know, that I had to, and I felt like it would be cool to maybe allude that this rib cage is in space. I'm not sure why it's in space, it's just magical and whimsical and it's in space okay so I added in some stars and then I added in some highlights and then I felt like why not add some gold to this I feel like that would be cool so I peeled off the tape for this outside and this canvas kind of has this little frame on it so I decided to paint the frame gold to make it match a little bit more and I do a lot more with this later to make it all blend but here is the finished piece for now this is four hours later and this is what it looks like and I'm super happy with it but here it is finished I added in some more sparkles and magic and touched it up a little bit more I also added some colors to the outside of the frame to really just make sure that the piece looked like it was really alive I feel like the camera is not doing this piece justice. Those colors are popping in real life. They are so vibrant and beautiful, and I am so happy with all of the colors and how this turned out. Let me know what you think about this piece, and let me know if you'd like prints of it, because I think that'd be really cool to make some limited edition prints. But let me know what you think, and like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you have any ideas of what colorful things I should paint next. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Thank you.